Hey guys, welcome. Today we have a class spotlight for knights. Let's get into knights. Currently there are two, six, four knight synergies, and let's look at the units for the knights first. So we have the one cost knights being Batrider, two cost knights being Chaos Knight, Luna, three cost knights being Abaddon and Only Knight, and four cost knight being Dragon Knight. So yes, there are six knights in total. The class synergy for the knights is shield, or we could call it super armor. Every three seconds, the shield will proc at 30% chance, and this can trigger, and this can stack multiple times when you have more than two knights, when you have four knights, when you have six knights, this can stack up. So, what does this shield do? This shield, each time a shield procs, it will give this particular knight a 75% magic resistance and 30 armor for three seconds. And this always happens every three seconds. And, but this will not happen on the first second of the game. Let's keep that in mind. Two knights. What happens with two knights is all knights separately, they have own separate checks. All knights have a trigger of shield at 30% chance. Every three seconds that is. Now with four knights, all knights have a trigger for shield at 30% chance. But this triggers twice now. So what that means is for the knights, each of those knights, say those knights, by having four knights on the table, they will have a 30% check every three seconds twice. So if they didn't check the first time, they didn't succeed to get the shield, they will check again for the second time. And this happens every time three seconds happens. And this allows the knights to have double stacks. So that means you have 75%, 75% magic resistance stacked on top. You have 30 armor and 30 armor stacked on top. If you happen to receive double of the 30% upon one check. So this is why most of the time with four knights, most of the knights will miss one check but have the second check or have at least one check of the shield. With six knights, all knights will have now three checks of 30% each time it's three second checkup. And that means if you miss the first one, you still have the second one and the third one to go. So it's really unlikely for you to not have a super armor every three seconds. And what's more likely is it's likely to have two stack or three stack of super armor. So almost physically and magically immune with six knights. But of course, if you fail all those checks and then that three seconds, your knights are vulnerable again. So what we want to highlight is that although the shield seems to make the four or six knights invulnerable, they're still very much countered by pure damage. So what does pure damage? Are the demons and the enigma is one of the highlights. That's why you see when people ask what are the counters for knights, we'll touch on it very soon, it's enigma or pure damage. And one of the reasons why knights are so tanky and sometimes they're not so tanky is that they're kind of like RNG tank here. RNG tanking units. If you get a good RNG, you're going to have a unit that survives for the entire fight with super armor. If you have four knights, this unit can stack super armor every three seconds twice. So it's 60 armor and double 75 magic resistance. And if that happens, you're super tanky. If you don't get the first check of the super armor, what's going to happen is it's going to likely your frontline knights will die or they lose too much health, they won't be able to tank up for the rest of the fights. Let's look at the races and stage of the knights. In the early game, the knights can be weak or strong depending on the number of knights used and depending on the number of two stars knights used. Over here we can see we did find a two star Abaddon. Each time we find a two star knight and each time we have more than two or four knights, they become increasingly stronger. And this is what I mean by the early game strength. You can be a very strong early game with lucky find of a two star CK. 2-star Batrider is okay, 2-star Luna is very nice, 2-star Abaddon, 2-star Only Knight is one of the key moments for knights to become stronger. Because most of the knights only need 2-star to be relevant. But the knights can be weak if you do not find 2-star knights. Because unlike other units, most of the knights are 2 cost and 3 cost, and sometimes it's hard to find them. Knights can also be strong in the early game when you have a strong solid backline. What would that be? Sometimes it could be in the form of a Shadow Thing, maybe a Queen of Pain, maybe a Razor. If you find those the two star, they can enjoy the comfort of sitting behind the knights and dealing a lot of damage because the knights are super tanky. The downside of a knight being tanky is that they don't do much damage themselves. Unless you have a really, really stacked up Luna that's comfortably sitting in the back line doing damage. But sometimes it's hard to find a two star Luna in the early game. How is knights in the mid game? 
Knights is actually one of the strongest class in the mid game, and we have noticed currently the meta have shifted towards Knights. There's two reasons for that, because four Knights are quite easy to be found, because you can start with a Batrider, and you can also start into Trolls with a Batrider. The second thing is, most Knights only need two stars to be super relevant. As you can see, they keep proccing the super armor, and it's quite tanky. This allows you to transform into multiple transitions with Knights, and of course we know the common ones being the troll being the dragon, there's a few which I'll touch on. There are common ones, there are some rare ones, but the knights are so versatile for the reason is that it's easy to find them. They really become a placeholder for you. And in the current matter, how many knights usually can secure top four position if you run them correctly? That is to say, if no one else also runs knight and takes all your two star knights. How about the late game? The knights can stay quite relevant in the late game if you found enough three star knights. We know that's a fact, but what about other things? There can be other unit compositions, or even two star knights can even be relevant and becoming top four if you find the counters to the enemy lineup. Let's say, what are the counters? Yes, knights have super armor, but if you still have a Dusa and Tide, that means you're almost invulnerable to mages. Unless it's a really, really strong mage with a lot of disables. Now, also, knights. Are countered by Enigma. So the way to counter Enigma sometimes is to have a Doom, sometimes is to split, split your formation, sometimes is to have an anti mage. There are a few ways, but there's no ideal counter against Enigma as knights. So in that late game, in that late game, knights really do enjoy a bit of undead, a bit of the maybe warlock synergy, or even knights enjoy a bit of the techies because knights usually run on dead. With something like Techies or Enigma, you can do massive amount of damage in a short period of time, and you can do a massive overall damage for neutral monsters with Enigma. So knights do really want to combine with something that does great damage. Let's look at the counters knights. What are knights weak at? Knights are mainly physical attack melee units. Other than the Luna and the Batrider, every knight is physical and they are melee units, so most of the knights casting spells are great, but knights don't excel in terms of damage. And because of that, knights can have trouble against elves, against warriors, against six goblins, and because of the melee-ness, knights can tend to have trouble when they have multiple melee DPS damage dealers. So let's say if I have a terror blade, I have like four knights, which are melee. All of my units jumps in. Sometimes my terror blade will be stuck behind. He will not be able to hit anything. Then he gets stuck there. That's why sometimes it's nicer for nice to have range units, which will touch on as well. What are the possible counter compensation for knights? This, those are not the ideal counters, but those are the possible counters for knights. One of them is mages, with three plus mages, with disables and elementals. Being a melee lineup, knights can be frozen by things like tiny and morphling. And once they're frozen, they're pretty much sitting dark for the mage to have the initial round of cast. And despite the fact they can have super armor, most of the damage do go through if the mage keep casting on the knights. That's before you have a three star knight. So mages with disables and elementals can be a very big counter to knights because the knights are so slow and they're slow to act up on the enemy. There are also combinations like six elves, warriors, six warriors, goblin, six goblins, knights, the other team have a knight, which is four plus knights, but with a better composition. Let's say if they have a Necromancer two star, a Death Prophet two star, an Enigma one or two star, the Adusa two star, that actually controls your knights before you can get your spells off. So the ideal counters are not there for knights, but the unit composition and whoever is just stronger lineup can be a counter to knights. That's why positioning and Choices of unit composition and items can be very key for knights. Let's look at the possible transition for knights. Knights can be two knights, four knights, and six knights. Knights can have three warlocks, which can be necromancer, shadow thing, or a death prophet late game. Knights can have two undead with Abaddon. Knights can have three mages with lich, maybe a razor, maybe a crystal maiden. Knights can have two or four trolls. Well, no, this is one of the most popular knights combinations. Knights can have three hunters, one being Medusa, one being Tide for the magical resistance, and one more for the additional range assistance. Knights can have three dragons. Puck and Viper is great with six knights as well. Knights can have four humans. We need to keep that in mind that DK and 
only that it's a human. If we have two more humans, one with crystal maiden, one maybe with lichen, and then all of a sudden we can do some great silence. Knights can go with demons as well. I'll be showing you guys how to run knights with demons. Maybe not so effectively, but just as a demonstration, it's other alternatives to knights. One of the things I want to highlight for the possible composition is that one to keep in, keep in mind that knights are mostly melee units. We don't want too many melee units as a good lineup for knights to deal damage. So what that means is let's look at the key transition units for knights. In the early game, those can be Draw Ranger, Anti Mage, Witch Doctor, and Bat Rider. Once we get to the mid to the uh, to the early to mid game, we can look at the Luna as two star, Chaos Knight as two star, Shadow Fiend two star, Dragon Knight plus plus dragons, Long Druid, Necromancer, and then once we get to the very much late game, we can look at Enigma, Techies, even a Gyrocopter, even a Lich, and Death Prophet. So yes, you just realized I did name almost all the legendaries and also Tidehunter. Yes, knights can really enjoy the legendaries because they provide something knights does not have, a massive burst damage or a massive control. Let's look at the itemizations for knights. What are the item suggestions for knights? The item suggestion for knights defensive frontliners is Abaddon, Only Knight, Chaos Knight, and Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight is a unique one. It's key to combine positioning and itemization. What I tend to do is I want my knights in the corner to tank up. Over here, we can see the Abaddon and Only Knight and the main tanks. Being over there, I tend to give melee tanking unit, let's say, I can tend to give melee tanking armor items to the Abaddon and Only Knight. I have the Shadow Shaman over here so he can, he can receive some damage and instantly hex the enemy. Knowing that, usually I will not be giving items to the Shadow Shaman, but what I'll be doing is I'll be giving my Stop Shield or my Magic Resistance or my Plate Mail to the Abaddon and Only Knight. And I usually plan ahead. If I know it's likely to find the Hyperstone, I tend to give the Plate Mail and the Chain Mail to the one unit. How about attack damage items and mana generation items? For the early game, I tend to give those to the Draw Ranger, Witch Doctor, Bat Rider, Luna, Chaos Knight, and Necromancer. So the Draw Ranger, of course, doesn't need any mana regeneration items, and Draw Ranger can be sold for a Necromancer. So I tend to give all the attack damage items to the Draw Ranger in combination with Abaddon. For the Witch Doctor, you just need some mana generation items. Being a, being a Warlock, Witch Doctor gained twice the mana, and also what Witch Hunter does is he can cast fast, then it's likely he'll cast twice in a fight. For the Bat Rider, he doesn't need any attack damage items, but if you give him one or two mana generation items, he can do incredible incredible amount of damage in the early game. But once the mid game and late game comes, he go back to the mediocre damage dealer. For the Luna, Master of Madness is ideal, but if you keep the Master of Madness on the Luna, then the troll is gonna miss out. So it's gonna be a balance for you guys. The Chaos Knight is one of the first knights we can find as 2 star. Being a 2 star knight, Chaos Knight is great as a demon with massive damage and a bruiser that excels in single fighting units that fights 1 vs 1. But keep in mind, Chaos Knight will fall off. Necromancer on the side, if you give him any attack or any mana regeneration item for a level 1 Necromancer, he will be hitting his max mana regeneration potential and be healing every 6 seconds. So it's one of those underrated early game unit if you find and give him some items he's great let's look at the late game items for the knights i am saying things about chores because chores so often appear in a knight lineup so we're going to pretend chore is a part of the knights half of the time so a chore two star will enjoy a master madness so this is a comparison with a luna two star now if you have a three star luna yes definitely stack the master madness on the luna instead of the chore now disruptor can work in a night lineup with chores. Medusa and Tide. Medusa will enjoy most of the mana generation items for the night lineup because most night lineup does not provide any buffs to the Medusa unless you have chores as well. So the Medusa really want to cast early so your knights don't get controlled and they can actually push through the enemy. You can also give items to the Lich, the Death Prophet, etc. and even Techies because knights tend to have undead techies and lich and units that tend to have a big cast is really favorable by the knights as well now let's look at the position of guides for the knights over here we can see an early game position i call this early game although it's hard to round 12 because i tend to feel knights really become power after round 11 when you collect enough two-star knights 
over here most likely I'll tend to run the knights in a side position not because this is the strongest position for offense but rather it allows me to correctly position my knights so most of the tanky knights I have will be tanking correctly so because knights are tanky units tanky class I really want them to excel in what they do best which is tanky so the side position is to provide most tanky potential for the knights. Being on the side position for the knights, it allows most of my knights to tank in this position and this position. And the rest of my units will tend to have a chance to flank from the left or the right, depending on which side you pick. This is ideal because most people in the game tend to have the units in the middle. So if they have the units in the middle, it's likely you'll be killing this unit, this unit, and you flank from the right or flank from the right, uh, from the left. Let's have a look. This time we did face him front down, but we are still flanking and single targeting, killing one at a time. For because most of our units are on the side, and half of his units is in the middle. Yes, our knights do suffer from his damage as well, but we know where the tank here ends. Over here, we can see a mid game position for the knights, and I think most of you have noticed that not much has changed for the knights. This is because the knights still do enjoy the side positioning quite a bit. This is a mid game. We haven't went into the mid to late game yet when everyone's got massive mage with AOEs, everyone's got disruptor, everyone's got tide. Before that, this is the stage before that. This allows again a knights to tank correctly and our stronger backline now can even focus better on enemy who are positioning the units in the middle. Let's have a look at the minimap when the round starts. Over here we can see a lot of players are still playing seeing the units more to the middle. And if they're to the middle, this side position will punish them by single out each of the units and killing them one at a time. The downside is our knight is also susceptible to massive damage from the whole side, but knowing that with the tanky ones, we can still allow that to happen. Over here, we have a late game position from the knights. I have been splitting my knights, and as you can see guys, yes, this time we actually have the six knights over here. And those are the six knights with chores, because the chores allow knights to be accelerated. And having the six knights, I do mention about the potential and the key having three star knights or even three star units. Here we have a three star CK and we have a three star Shadow Shaman. And being split, split apart really avoid a massive catch with Enigma. One thing we say, okay, counter Enigma is by splitting. If we split, he can't catch all of us. So I'm putting two of my eggs in separate baskets. The second thing is we also avoid things like Tide Hunter and maybe we can avoid things like a static storm from the disruptor what we can't avoid is medusa so the downside with knights is that we can't focus on medusa because we don't deal burst damage we're pretty sustained one thing i want to highlight is the position of the dk and the shadow shaman being a three star shadow shaman i want him to receive some damage in the front line being a two star dk i want him to receive some damage in the front line as well but not all the damage so that's why they're right to the corner for the only knight and DK, they also have a chance of human silence. So usually we want to have the only knight and DK on a particular target, say the conquer. Unfortunately, he, but here, he human silence me <laughs> instead of a human silence team. This is a little unfortunate, but it does happen. But the idea is great. And yes, having our three star knights will really excel us in fighting late game against majors or against most lineup. Because having enough super armor and having a three star unit is almost immortal. Let's look at some class specific tips for the knights. The first tip is rerolling is usually recommended after level six or reaching level seven because some of the key knights are Abaddon, only knight. And after finding a Chaos Knight and Luna, we really want to level faster to level six at least and start rerolling after reaching six. Why is that? Because level six to level eight have the highest rates for three star units. And now Abaddon and only knight are usually the key knights in the front line being two star, they are essential for us from round 10 to round 26 at least. Now, having those units to two star is so crucial. So what I usually do is instead of trying to save, I try to level to level six as fast as I can. If I stabilize, I can save at level six. If not, I'm happy to go to level seven for the higher rates of finding my Necromancer, my Dragon Knight, my Abaddon, my only Knight's rates are not gonna change, but the purple rates are gonna increase. Finding the Dragon Knight allows us to consider Dragons and Knights. Finding the Necromancer combines with the DK to amplify the physical damage we deal to the enemy. 
The second tip I want to offer to you guys is I will plan for multiple synergies and combinations with knights. Knights are great and they're very tanky. The downside is they don't do much damage. So we need synergies and combos that help them to do that. One of the combinations we mentioned earlier are the trolls. The second one is the dragons. The third one is six knights. Those are great, but let's be flexible. Sometimes it's hard to find a troll warlord. Sometimes it's hard to find a two-star DK. And sometimes with six knights, some of the knights are not two stars yet. So if we've been flexible, if we open ourselves up to six knights, dragons, and troll, this gives us a higher chance of landing the troll warlord, landing the DK, or landing more composition. But if you ask me what are the better knights combinations, I'll definitely say the trolls. And after the trolls with knights, we can think of the six knights. You can go into the dragons and knights if you find a two-star DK early. But what I tend to see is that most people will not have a two-star DK until round 20. And that sometimes that's a little weak. On the plus side, if you do find a two-star park and two-star viper early, the four knights and the two dragons, and the three dragons can also work wonders. So it's really how fast we can find two star units and whichever combination you find the most two star unit, we can take that one. But of course, being the trolls, you only need a one star troll wallet to make everything run super fast. The third tip I want to share with you guys is to be flexible. The thing is, if we can't find the troll warlord or the DK or any other transition in mind, we can still plan for some unique transitions that's not often used by people. One of them is the three warlocks. The three warlocks being one Shadowfing, one Necromancer, and maybe one Enigma, or maybe one that is a warlock that's not commonly used. We can start a life steal. Because the knights can be super tanky with the armor, they also deal a bit of physical damage. Having the life steal is actually not the worst thing. And also, usually, having the lifesteal, you also have the undead, two of the undead, sometimes even six or four of the undead to amplify the physical damage you can deal to the enemy. Now, the downside is having a shadow thing means the Chaos Knight will be affected by the shadow thing. Both will lose their knight, both will lose their demon powers. That's why sometimes it's okay to run an anti mage and a terror blade to turn it into knights and demons. This is quite fun to play, but sometimes the downside is too many melee units and you don't have enough spell caster to really become strong in the mid to late game. And yes, also, you get destroyed by the enemy mages and other strong units like this one. Knights can also go into hunters and mages. This is something I want to highlight with you guys as well. Having the mage lineup, Crystal Maiden is key here. After the Crystal Maiden, you definitely want a Lich to go with Abaddon. If you can get to the Lich, if you cannot, you can have the Keeper of the Light and Razor. Why is that? Because knights can be so tanky, maybe you can cast two spells with the with the Keep of the Light and the Razor. And the Crystal Maiden is incredibly underrated for the knights because she allowed the DK to transform faster. She allowed Abaddon to start protecting other units. She allowed the only knight to heal faster, which in all in all allows you to survive longer, have more chance with a 30% procs with a super shield, and be able to dominate the enemy with your spell power. Knights with Hunters is the same reason, but this time it allows Focus Fire, allows you to go into the corner on the side, having a better strong Focus Fire, amplifies the physical damage with the Undead synergies, and also protects the Hunter with the tacky tacky frontline. If you have a Dusa, a Jaw Ranger, maybe a Windrunner, you can look to do a lot of damage and transition into Nagas, or you know more on that after. Last tip I want to share with you guys with Knights is also the idea that health is a resource. Here in the early to mid game, we can accept some losses as Knights because Knights can be a solid comeback lineup for the mid game. So what are the HP indicators and how do we use it? Usually those indicators are for us after round 6 and until round 15 I think latest. So let's look at some. If your HP is greater than 80%, it's actually not bad. You can even start going into a losing streak with knights because knowing that you're actually strong in the mid game when you find all your three or your two star knights you can actually think of taking one or two units back to forcefully have a losing streak now be aware if your hp go lower though if your hp go about 60 percent then you have to consider something you have to consider what if the troll i want to run in my night now lineup, the troll warlock never comes. What if a DK never comes? What if I don't find a necromancer? You need to start to adjust a bit. Maybe keep a few units like hunters, maybe keep a few units like undead. 
So how do I compare the adjustment to keep units and to, to sell units for gold? Before round 15, if I know I'm a strong comeback lineup, I'm happy to keep for potential. If I'm not losing too much health, I'm happy to keep units on the bench for potential. But after round 15, I really do want the economy because I know if I don't have the economy now, it's likely people will run over me with leveling up and re-rolling. So the balance again is with the how much health you have. So that's when we look at the third HP indicator being 45%. If you have 45% or less, you probably should look into spending very soon in the next one or two rounds. Because now leveling up and re-rolling can be key and transitioning into units, say mages or dragons or even trolls, finding that troll wallet is going to be key. What do I mean by level up or re-roll and how do we do that? If we're looking at level 8 and we need one Abaddon and one only knight for maybe a 3 star Abaddon, then it's important we stay at level 8 to roll before we go to level 9. Unless you look at your board, you can see a 2-star unit that can change your lineup, make you stronger, say add another knight for 6 knights. Then maybe it's better to level up. So what we decide is what are we rolling for and how many we can hit with this roll. If you can only hit 2 or less units with the roll, say if over here if I rolled, I can only find only knight, that's it. Then maybe it's not that great if I roll. Maybe I can level up because level I guarantee I have a particular unit on the board, but because if I rolled, if I don't find anything, what I'm looking at is a permanent loss. I'll never be able to level up with my gold anymore because so often we go into a desperate rolling. We keep rolling, we're not finding it, we keep rolling again. Now, the last HP indicator is 25%. When we are at 25% for the knights, I do recommend to go all in and also start spending quite a bit of money because knights can be overwhelmed Oh, knights can overwhelm the enemy simply based on RNG. And when that happens, we really want to be careful because if RNG works for us, we get all the shields we want. If RNG doesn't work and we happen to meet a mage with a massive AoE, they'll just swipe us away. So because of that, I think 25% is definitely a good indicator to start spending because you want to have some buffer of HP. Because as knights, sometimes with bad RNG, everything will take you right away. With good RNG, you should be able to survive and deal some damage with your damage dealers. Looking over here, this is a warrior lineup. Having the warriors is not the best thing for demons and knights because we mentioned warriors have armor. And because they have armor, we most of us are right clickers. We can't deal with them. And this is one of the biggest reasons we lost here because we did face one of the counters to knights. Having the physical attack means we don't have enough damage in other forms. What I could have done is transform out of demons and find myself some Enigma, maybe a Lich, maybe a Jaro to come by and to have a better formation. Having the Knights as physical lineup really reduce our chance of not being countered by a particular lineup. Being our physical lineup, we might lose to the Elves, we might lose to the Warriors because most of our damage is physical. But on the plus side, if we can really push through with the Trolls or if we can push through with things like Enigma, we can actually start countering the enemy. And Knights are also great for sustainability, knights are great against mages once you have enough of them. To summarize first, knights are great frontliners. They're quite in the matter right now because a lot of people are running them. People tend to run six knights, people tend to run dragon knights, people tend to run troy knights. The downside for knights is that if you don't find your two star knights early enough, you'll find yourself in an awkward position that you're not strong, you're not weak, you're losing or you're not losing too badly. But before you know it, other people will become more mature with the lineup, all of a sudden they will run you over. Because you're tanky with knights around 16 to 22, and after that, all of a sudden you'll find knights are no longer that tanky again. So that is key for us to know the HP indicators, key for us to save and to spend correctly. Thank you so much guys for watching, and if you want to help us further, please share, please like, and please subscribe to the videos. And if you're free, please say hi on Twitch. Thank you so much guys, I'll see you guys next time.